welcome to all of you and welcome here to this first course of the uh, course management. My name is Norta van der Poel. I'm one of the lecturers here. And next to me, you can see my colleague, Marco Oscars. Marco Oscars. Yeah. And she'll be uh, together. You'll see both of us in the first three weeks of this course. Afterwards, you'll see more of our lectures, and I'll show you the names in a minute. Um, well, you see a nice introduction picture here about an, uh, one of the offices. Um, you've seen our offices, the places where we work. I think this is a nice place to work if I look at this. Does anyone know where it's taken? Google. Google could have been. Uh, not Google, but you're, <coughs> near. you're, you're near. It's a uh, cool boom. Uh, so they have nice environments there, and they specifically do this to inspire their people and to make sure that they like to work where they work. Well, that's what we're going to talk about during this course as well. But first, as I told you, who are we? Who are you going to see in the upcoming weeks? My name's on top, Norcha van der Poel. Marco already introduced herself. And you'll see Carl Gretkens as well. Shh. May I ask you? Yeah. Otherwise, I can't be understood at the end uh, for the background. Carl Gretkens will be giving some lectures about process management. And at the end, you'll also get lectures by Francis Nijenhoff about communication. So quite a diversity in different topics. But we'll start off with human resources management. This course, you already see, it has uh, it's closely linked to a project which you'll get in the term after this, in term D. We'll start off in this term, in term C, with quite a lot of theory. I hope everyone already ordered the books that you need for this uh, uh, course. Annabelle knows that it's quite difficult to uh, do the project. Good afternoon. This time you're in, you're allowed in, but next time you have to be on time. Um, so it's quite a lot of theory. So start reading from the first week on. Then it's going to be very doable to do the exam. It's a multiple choice exam, but make sure you start reading from the start. Um, so this course about human resources management, internal communication and process management. Next term, you'll be applying your knowledge in a project which will be for a commissioner somewhere in the field. <coughs> and so that will be the next term you will be using this knowledge. Um, it will be an assessment with open questions. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And once you start studying open questions. Yeah, she mentioned it before. Yeah, I mentioned, I made a mistake because I said multiple choice, I meant the open uh, questions. My <laughs> Already making it difficult for you. In the past we used to have multiple choice, but since a few years we use open questions. This is a book that you should have. It's a book by Gomez, Managing Human Resources. So hopefully you have this book. Can I see some hands who does not have the book at this point in time? Oh, that's quite a lot of people. So I make sure to start ordering this book. So that was briefly about the um, overall setup. There's a course guideline. You can find it on the next school. Make sure to make a print of this course outline because it tells you what to do for the various weeks, what to study. And so if you didn't do so yet, make sure to uh, download the course outline. But let's get started with the first uh, actual lecture about human resources management. Um, I have to talk briefly, hopefully after the end of this lecture, you can answer these questions. You should be able to tell me what HR is, what HR management is, 
you should be able to make a distinction between human resources management line and staff. This comes back in exams a lot of times as well. So already write down to make sure you can answer this during an exam. An HR cycle is usually one of the questions. We hope you can dream the HR cycle at the end of this, uh, by the end of this course. So make sure to memorize the HR cycle. And in the end, if we still have time, I can give you some ideas about how Vacant Soleil, um, I'm one of the companies here in the Netherlands, what they do for HR. If not, you can read it, uh, read it at home. Um, but first, just to give you a brief introduction on what human resources management is, I'll show you a brief video. It's a three minute a short video, so let's get started with that to give you a short impression. is the HR or Human Resources Manager. HR staff kick into action and start the search for interested recruits. Recruiting is a huge part of making great teams. From the group of wannabes, HR staff use their knowledge and experience to find the best person for the job. HR managers are a vital link in the company's overall structure, making sure that the people match the company's purpose. But Human Resources staff do much more than find stars for the team. They provide expert advice to managers about how they can improve their team's performance and suggest training options to optimize staff potential. HR staff also monitor well-being, look after safety needs, and sometimes act as intermediaries. Both sides need HR when differences arise. And importantly, they make sure people get paid fairly. They then follow up to ensure when jobs change, so does the pay. Keeping capable staff saves time and money in the long run. So HR managers play a big part in staff retention. In a big company, helping people along a successful career path is part of this responsibility. HR managers can make a big difference when they connect the right people. They help shape the business by facilitating change. Then everyone benefits. HR experts are employed all over the world, which allows for great overseas employment opportunities. So in summing up, Human resources recruit team members, advise on team performance, oversee staff training options, monitor well-being, facilitate change, organise salary payments, and resolve grievances. Your training starts here. Recruit yourself into HR by enrolling in a business course at Monash University. <laughs> It's a very brief video, of course, but it nicely tells in just two or three minutes what HR managers do. And you actually, I already said that, right, uh, in the end you should memorize an HR cycle, human resources cycle. They already tell in this brief video what the HR cycle is. Hopefully in the end you'll memorize. What do you remember? What do they tell in the brief video? What's one of the elements? Recruit new staff is one of them. What's the other one? goals. 
So that's what you do in the HR process as well. And um, yeah, it's quite difficult to actually get that done because everyone has different goals in life, different things by which you're motivated. So how do I make sure that every employee in my company keeps motivated and keeps working and comes back to work every day? That's what you do at HR. So a definition of human resource management, it's the function within the organization that focuses on the recruitment of your personnel, the management of your personnel, and you provide direction for the people who work in your company. And there are many definitions of human resources management. So if I would ask it during an exam, give a definition of human resources management, we don't need the precise definition, but we do want to see the elements as mentioned here. To make it a bit more practical, I took a picture from our company. And Marco and I, we both have been working here now for quite some years. I don't know how many years have you been working here? I'm not going to tell. You're not going to tell? <laughs> But we have many colleagues who actually have been working here for over 10, 20, even more years. And the question is, why do we remain working for NHTB? Why don't we go to another employer? Why do we stay here? I don't know. Can anyone tell? What is it? Because of the vacations. Because of the vacations. It's one of them. I love the trips. Right? It's, it's a great means to get everyone uh, enthusiastic. Marco's going to join you to uh, Thailand. And so it's one of the benefits. If you work here, you can go to some of the great study trips. For us, it's for free. Great, right? You can go to Dubai, to this place, and your employer pays you. But what else? We if I talk to some of my uh, old study uh, mates, and I, what I study is um, uh, mechanical engineering at university. So some of them, I mean, if you study that, you could have also worked for other companies, and you could have uh, earned a lot more money. So sometimes I get these looks, but if you could earn so much more money, why do you end up here as a lecturer? I've got my reasons why I still think this is nice. So this is what human resources management, what they have to think about. They have to make sure that Marco and I, that we want to stay working here at NHTB and we don't get the best salaries. Same thing for your tourism. Usually within tourism, I think it's nice that you work in tourism, but usually you don't get the best salaries. Still, all of you want to go to tourism. So there's a reason why you want to work in tourism as well. And then do something differently to keep you motivated. We have a great team to work with, is one of them. And because we work with all the professionals, I go to work every day and I like it. I get the opportunities to do trainings every now and then, which makes it nice for me. I like the study trips that I do. I like the fact that I have holidays when my son has holidays as well. Some I'm off. I think we have the biggest amount of holidays. And if I go to my friends and tell them that I have six weeks of holidays, five actually in the summer holidays, then they do get jealous. I'm like, yeah, that's one of the things that I like about my work. So this is what you do if you become a leader of the team. And if you're in human resources management, it's what you should think about. What makes people stay in your company? And let me go to one of the challenges that you see as HR managers, just to give you some feeling about what they deal with. A lot of companies want the best people to work for them. But still, look at the room in here. I don't know how many guys we have here, but you're a minority in this sense. Still, if you look at the top positions, even in tourism <coughs> companies, you look at top positions and you count the number of women in top positions, there are less women in the top positions. How come? What is it? 
Now I'm going to the that group because you didn't want to know the answer there. But now I'm going to ask you. <laughs> if quota work or not. I don't know. It's a dilemma. What about this one? How do you select the best candidates? It's nice. It sounds easy. All of you come in here. You all want to apply for the new great position as a marketing manager for, let's say, Thomas Cook, you all arrive here. How do I make sure I select the best person? Have you asked for the experience? Yeah. How long have you been working? Uh, How long have you been working? Here? What type of plan did you do? Okay. So when you just finished college, you can never get the college position. No, but still, as for a junior marketing position, <coughs> all of you come. <coughs> If I want to select the best candidate out of all of you, do I do interviews with you? Is that the best way to select? To start the selection. To start the selection? No, you can make a trial for like two weeks, trial for one month, so you can select the second one. Okay. You are coming. Well, you can select the best candidate. You are coming then. Yeah. <laughs> 
You already get this dilemma, right? There's usually several phases of the selection. So a first phase, well, which phase is best? And how do you do the first selection? Should it base be on, on the experience of someone? Or what are the right criteria to make a first selection? Do I look at the number of spelling mistakes in your letter of application? Could be. Is it because I don't like your photo when I first look at your photo and I think, no, no, no. I, I prefer a woman or a guy or oh, what is it? How, how do I select? After you have a first selection, you might want to use, like you said, I can write a nice letter. That doesn't mean that I'm a good marketing person. So it would be nice if I could see someone perform on the job. I can't do that with all of you. So it's, it, it's difficult to really see how someone performs on the work floor and not in a nice setting of a selection interview. But a nice HR dilemma. Or this one. We talked about payments. Right? It was in the brief video at the start. Okay, we should pay. We should pay people. And I think you work because you get a salary in the end, don't you? I don't know. No? Do you get unmotivated if you don't get paid enough? Okay, she says I could get demotivated if I don't get paid enough, but it also counts if I get holidays or if I get other things. Yeah. There are big discussions ongoing if financial bonuses work. They might financial incentive, do you like one? <coughs> you work hard, you want to get paid more? Yeah, yeah, it might work. Could there also be a counter effect that if I pay people, why do you think there are discussions about financial bonuses? And let's go to the back somewhere. Can I ask you? Might be, okay, I already got the bonus. No, I don't need to work anymore. I already achieved my goal. Let's relax, don't do anything anymore. Could be. Yeah. Well, so there are some counter effects of financial bonuses as well. So this is a challenge. If I don't, people with, don't pay people with money, then what other instruments do I have to pay? Uh, can I use to still keep people motivated besides just money? We already talked a lot about, when we talk about HR, but we actually also talk about motivation. What drives people to work for an employer? Do you work? You work. What makes you work harder? The impact. The team environment. So if your team works hard, you tend to work harder as well. It does help a lot. And so here it gives a lot of incentives already, what makes people, what makes them motivated. And of course, if you give them challenges, that helps. If you give them sufficient support, if you give people a perspective of training and development, all of these are instruments that you as an HR manager can use. But it's not easy. So that's why Marco is going to spend an entire course also on how to motivate your employees. <coughs> this happens, unfortunately, it happens as well. The company downsizes due to economic reasons. They don't have enough money to keep everyone in your company. So who do you lay off? And how on earth do you make this decision? Quite difficult because you have to. Someone needs to be involved and take this hard decision. Usually, luckily, it doesn't happen a lot. But do you use the criteria? The ones who entered last in your company, they leave first because they have a temporary contract. So then I don't need a lawyer. Right? If you only work here for a year, I can you can leave the company without needing a lawyer. That's nice, it's less costly for me. But usually the ones who enter the latest in the company are usually the ones with a fresh attitude, an open mindset. It might be you, right, the younger people, with new insights. And then 
Romar, you're the first ones to have to leave whenever the company downsizes. Is it fair? No, maybe not. You might also have to take the decision of someone who's been working there for 20 years, who didn't perform so well, but he or she has a family at home. You know the difficult situation at home. You know it as an HR manager. You lay that person off, and then you get to the legal position what is allowed and what not. We won't go that far into the HR, but I do want you to know that this is also a dilemma we deal with. And this is another one. You see, this is usually the work environment that you might end up. You see a lot of people sitting behind their desks, <laughs> working very hard, but how on earth do you make the decision and decide who works the best? May I ask you? Staff department within companies. And 
why? Because if I'm the team leader and the sales department, and I end up in a position where um, I want to promote someone in my team, and I don't know the precise rules about promotion and how much salary I can pay someone, so what I do as the team leader, I go to the HR department and I ask them, how does it work precisely? What are the rules and regulations about human resources management? As a human resources manager, you're not the boss of everyone in your company. You don't decide on that. <coughs> but you do give the company advice about how to deal with the people in the company in general. Line managers, on the contrary, are those, if you have a line manager, it's your direct boss in the company. If I work as a sales employee, my direct boss is the sales manager. That's my line manager. If I perform badly, he usually tells me, Dorothy, you should work better. As a line manager, you're a direct supervisor. To make this more clear, I have some questions. And hopefully after these questions, you know more about the difference between line and staff. This is a pilot for an airline. Well, right, you see him, so who's responsible for HR? Which decisions does an HR line manager take? And what decisions does an HR staff person take? If I'm someone's manager, right, if I go to the, to the sales department, I'm the sales junior, my sales manager, is still involved with quite a lot of HR issues. If I'm ill during a day, and I need to go away for a day, I don't go to the HR department. I go to my direct <coughs> boss. So my direct boss is taking care of some HR issues as well. Every line manager in a company is involved in HR activities. He's not an HR manager. He doesn't decide on the policy of HR but he is responsible for how I perform in the company. Let's look at the differences. Who decides if we should select this pilot? Staff managers, would you say? <coughs> Let's see, um, do you agree? Judgment. 
And you could go to HR and tell them, hey, I'm going to have a difficult interview with one of my employees. He didn't perform well. How do I prepare for this interview? We'll help you as HR. Well, <coughs> the line manager here. Who decides how many new hires are needed in 10 years' time? I hear a lot of people, this is HR staff. This is where they do the plotting for a few years, they go to look at the HR planning, and then they make a decision. Right? So this is definitely something HR staff does. Who decides what he gets paid? Line of staff? It's staff who thinks about the system, the payment system. It's the HR direct manager who says, you did very well. I think you earned an X percent more. Right? But it's the operational decision on if I decide if we earn some extra money, that's the line manager. But the system, how does it work with the payment system, that's staff. Who decides if you need training? This is your line manager. Uh, he talks with you and therefore he knows whether or not you need training. But the training development, the training program, that's usually supported by HR staff. Who makes his new contracts? This is something HR staff does. They know all the legal procedures, know how th things work, so this is the HR department that makes up for the new contracts. So summarizing, HR for line managers, for direct bosses. Line managers, they directly supervise the employees. They're the ones coaching the employees. They have interviews after half a year, after a year, asking how well did you perform? What did you do? They make <coughs> agreements on what are your goals for next year? What I want you to work on? That's what your direct boss does. This is what the HR department does. They are the ones who are specialists about research, human resources management. So they're the ones making contracts, thinking about working conditions, thinking about new rewarding systems, training programs. That's the main distinction. We'll review it in our next lecture. See if you memorize this. Huh? But this is a crucial thing for you to remember. <coughs> And this is another one. Uh, this is another thing, an HR cycle. This is actually what it is that human resources managers do. So please write it down. I already talked about it for quite some while. There's some uh, activities, performance, recruitment, appraisal, training, exit, and rewarding. Where would you place the number?